You have some narrative in your mind that is so negative that when you look in the mirror, you see somebody worth trashing. You see what's wrong. You pick apart your appearance. And I want to reverse that because here's the deal about self-confidence. Self-confidence begins with you. You realize the word self is in there, right? I can't give you confidence. I can give you a little boost. I can give you tools. I can encourage you. But confidence is forged in fire. It's something that's within you. And here's the thing I want you to realize about confidence. You are a confident person. That's why you miss feeling that way. You can only miss what you know. You've just been blocked from the feeling of it. And wherever you are right now in your life, I'm telling you, confidence is in there. You just got to figure out how to tap into it. If you're holding on to something that does not serve you, you are making a terrible error. It's going to cause all kinds of problems. You may blame other people or other things. You may blame the situation. Uh-uh. It's you are the cause of the problem. The man that told me to pick up this book and read it, Ray Stanford, he had a saying. He used to say to me, Bob, you're the only problem you'll ever have, and you're the only solution. I think it might have taken me five years to understand it. But I do understand it. And you know something? I am the only problem I'll ever have, and I am the only solution. Don't hold on to anything that is not serving you. Reject it. You know the beautiful part about having an inductive reasoning factor? That's the part that chooses thoughts. You can accept or reject the beautiful part of your mind, you can accept or reject anything that comes into your world. Accept or reject it. It's a choice. Don't hold on to anything that is not so you. If we play the victim role, then we are using our personal power to be helpless. If we decide to accept responsibility, then we don't waste time blaming somebody or something out there. Some people feel guilty for creating illness or poverty or problems. They choose to interpret responsibility as guilt. And some members of the media like to refer to it as new age guilt. These people often feel guilty because they believe that they have failed in some way. However, they usually accept everything as a guilt trip in one way or another because it's another way to make themselves wrong. And that is not what I'm talking about. If we can use our problems and illnesses as opportunities to think about how we can change our lives, we have power. Here's something I want you to keep in mind. Life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. In the past, if you look at it, people have perceived themselves as victims of everything around them, victims of circumstances. And then we go, oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, life did not give me those wonderful things that other people have. And, and the simple reality is, no, no, if you have an issue, it's not the outside. This is what we've always, oh, universe, give me something. We now know that our issues are internal. It's our own subconscious beliefs that we've been programmed with of disempowerment. Like when a child is growing up and getting its programs, so think of what things parents say. Oh, you don't deserve this. Who do you think you are? I mean, the parents didn't mean that for your whole life. They just, they were trying to, you know, goad you, you know, needle you to make a change so they would say these things. 95% of our life comes from those programs. So if you have disempowering beliefs about who you think you are, because you got them from other people, that's how you know who you are. These disempowering beliefs play 95% of the day in an average person's life. So I say, yeah, well, my wishes and desires, oh, I want success, I want great relationships, I want all these wonderful things, I want health. I go, well, that's conscious mind, because conscious mind's creative. But uh, as science reveals, only 5% of the day are we operating from our own personal wishes and desires. 95% of the day we operate from the programs that we got in the first seven years. And if those programs, which psychologists have told us 70% are negative and disempowering and self-sabotaging, I say, good, apply these 95% of the day in your life. And you realize why your life is a struggle. It's not a struggle because the universe is not providing. It's a struggle because your own consciousness is not accepting.
and this is where we have to change. And so getting control of your mind, taking charge of your consciousness is a way of overcoming those limitations. There are many different ways to, to take this control back in, in your life. Uh, and one of them is the, the ability to, uh, like in yoga, for example, to be the master of your mind and not let it run the monkey mind. Let it run. No, I want this. I don't, don't let this other one go. And so overcoming the old self allows us to become somebody else. And there is that period of transition. Yeah. I call it the void where there's just not a lot happening. And you just got to be able yeah. to keep going and continuously get to the end of your belief where most people stop. I just had a fabulous conversation with someone uh, this weekend. Broke through to the other side and now there's so much magic happening around this person but she's worthy now to receive it and that's that that is the key because the universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving so we got to come initiated into this and understand it thousands of years of programming that says that we have to change things uh, matter to matter you know in three-dimensional reality and it will take time but to begin to connect to that resource called the quantum field and create from the field instead of from matter, there's a lot of unlearning that has to go on. You have to really begin to mentally rehearse. Mm. Like, so you ask yourself at the end of your day, I do this every day, how'd I do? How'd I do today, bro? How'd you do? Did you do good? Where'd you fall from grace? What, what, what was it that caused you to go unconscious for the rest of the day like what was that moment now if you're a student of life you'll begin to contemplate well it was that person that said that thing then i reacted or this i got this email or things didn't go my way and i started feeling angry or frustrated or fearful the next time that happens how could i involve my experience now you may have to search for some answers of the best model to build or you may actually have a long contemplation and start to go, God, the next time that happens, I think I'm gonna do this or I'm gonna do that or I'm gonna plan my behaviors. And the act of closing your eyes and rehearsing what you're going to do begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you already did it. Now the brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. And if you keep installing that hardware, the hardware will become a software program, which means you'll just start acting like a happy person. Why? There's no magic there. You installed the circuitry. So that's more important than the news. Right. It's more important than answering any email or any text. It's more important than talking about your past. If you want to enjoy self-confidence on the outside, you must practice complete integrity on the inside. The foundation of self-confidence is for you to live your life consistent with your innermost values and principles while thinking and acting in harmony with your highest aspirations. Men and women with the most rock solid self-confidence are those who are absolutely clear about what it is they believe to be right and good and worthwhile and who live their lives consistent with these values. Everything they do or say is an expression of their innermost convictions. Your whole world can fall down around you, but as long as you know that you are doing the right thing, you will have a deep inner sense of calm that will manifest itself in an attitude of confidence and self. In an attitude of confidence and self-assurance in any situation, you will have many ups and downs in life. But what is most important is that you remain true to yourself. Your true values are only expressed in your actions, in what you do. You can tell what you truly believe by observing what you do in any situation in which you have to make a choice, especially when you are under stress and pulled in two directions at once with opposing demands or responsibilities. This is when your true values are revealed. The action that you take in any given situation will tell you which of your values is uppermost or whether you have any values at all. It is not what you say, hope, wish or intend but only what you do that counts. Your choices of the actions you take tell you unerringly who you really are. 
You can develop within yourself a superb set of values by acting as though you already had those values. You can develop integrity and courage and compassion and confidence by behaving as though you already had these qualities. The more you act the part, especially when you demonstrate these qualities under stress or when you feel like doing or saying something else, the more rapidly these qualities become a permanent part of your mental makeup. The more you practice good values, the more rapidly you become a truly superior person. The keys to developing the unshakable self-confidence that will make everything else possible for you are self-control, self-mastery, and self-discipline. Self-confidence can come directly by behaving in a self-confident manner, but more often it comes indirectly by doing and saying the things and practicing the behaviors that need self-confidence. The most important self-development behavior is living consistently with your highest values at every opportunity.